Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. This week, our weekly channeling guest is someone rather unexpected. I hadn't planned on channeling her, but she just popped into mind yesterday. And I thought, oh, she would be great to talk to. I hope you enjoy this channel. Help me to welcome in Joan Rivers. <laughs> All right, so the energy I will share with you is kind of business-like. And prior to, so to kind of get me in the mood to channel her, um, I decided to look up on YouTube a video of her from her time at QVC. Now, something you need to know about Bridget is I'm all about the convenience of the online shopping. So I like QVC. Like I was born and raised on QVC. And <laughs> full disclosure, I like QVC. Um, and <laughs> oh, funny. And I know that she had a like a clothing line and some jewelry on QVC because I've seen it. So I thought I'm gonna look up Joan Rivers on QVC so I can watch her kind of feel her energy, you know, hear her a little bit, kind of feel her vibe and see if we can actually have a conversation. And it works. It totally works. So I thought, okay. So I was putzing around the house doing some stuff while I was listening. First I tried to kind of watch it and then I went, uh, oh, no, I just started listening to it. And then I could hear her. So it was perfect conversation. I wanted to make sure that the vibration that I channeled her wasn't something where I was stretching and reaching for her background, her history, her historical significance, or what ha her influence, but that I could just con you know talk to her with something that I relate to. And so style and fashion and QVC was a good way to kind of open up that portal, which I haven't, I don't usually do that. It's interesting, you know, come to think of it, I really probably maybe should start a ritual or a connection uh, practice where if I'm going to channel someone that's like a musician, for example, I should listen to a music of theirs or a song or something. It might not be a bad idea. I think most of the time I really try hard to just be such a blank slate and not know anything going in and all, nothing, nothing, nothing. Um, but then I really work hard and struggle to get some of the details that are really actually publicly accessible. So it's kind of ridiculous to do that. So you know that when we focus on doing a channel, as Joan Rivers will bring forward her energy to, to talk and connect, it's to learn and grow from her experiences and for her to relate to us some of the insights that she has access to now as a spirit in the afterlife. And part of this process is the energy. I want you to be able to feel the energy. I want you to feel the message and the information regardless of who it's being channeled in from. I want you to feel the energy, okay? Just feel it. So whatever you think of Joan Rivers, just set that aside. <laughs> and whatever you maybe have your image or impression of her, it's, it's different in the afterlife. I'm gonna tell you that because she's different. All right, Joan, so come on in a little closer. And... Uh, have a seat and we'll have a discussion. Um, she's wearing black, like a long black shirt and uh, black dress pants. She says you always wear black. You know you always look good if you're wearing black, she said, always look good. And she's like, it's not it's not uh, like a, a fashion no-no anymore. It used to be, oh, are you going to a funeral? Who died, you know? And she says, not now. Um, it's not like that anymore. Now it's like a staple, like that's what you have to have. That's like your blank canvas is, is a black pants, you know, something black, wear something black and then jazz it up with other things, accessories and stuff and such. Um, she, so I have some questions for you I wanted to ask and we already kind of had started having a dialogue. So I wrote down some things so that we could um, get at the point of some of the, the stuff that we've been chatting about. And so I, Ironically, not so ironically, but synchronistically, when I Googled to find a QVC uh, segment with you, I found one from August 2014. And that was like the month before you died. And the only re way I, reason I know that is because I looked online, I thought after we, um, after we made our initial connection and then I watched the QVC thing, 
I felt like it was your last time on there or something. It was like monumental. It was really important why that one would be the one that showed up. And then there was tons of other ones too, but that one was right there. And I'm like, I'm, not, I'm watching this one. And then I, so I thought, I wonder when she died. I wonder when it was that she died. So I Googled quick and just saw Joan Rivers' death and that just showed the date. And then I shut the computer and came over here to sit down and I don't need all the details about anything else. I just wanted to know. And it was a month later, one month. So that was totally synchronistic, so I could connect to that. Um, I know that you were progressive. You were ahead of your time as far as um, comedians go, that you did stand-up, and that you were known for, and she says, my big mouth. <coughs> That's what they said of all women, you know, back in my day. She says, oh, please, you know, I was... I was on TV before you were in, even in diapers. You were barely even a thought in your parents' mind, she says. And um, she says her early days on Ed Sullivan. If you're a fan, will you um, confirm that? Was she on the Ed Sullivan show? Because she says the early day, my, she says, yes, I was. Yes, I was, my early days of Ed Sullivan. Um, she said, yes, I was known for my voice. So she and I have had a little bit of conversation, just a tiny and kind of back and forth while I was setting up to do this. And one of the things I was gonna ask her was her beauty secrets. Like, um, I know that she died, I think she died doing some kind of cosmetic thing. I'm not 100% sure on that. Can you confirm that? She said, I cannot confirm nor deny. Okay. <laughs> She's like, that's nobody's business, you know? That's nobody's business. It kind of seems like you went under and didn't come out. Is that true? like an anesthesia thing. She said it was a reaction, a reaction to multiple things. Like it looks like she was on some kind of medication or something and then it reacted adversely with her, um, didn't work well with her body or something. And it seems like it was a, a breathing thing, like stop breathing, I can't breathe or something like that, I'm not able to breathe. But it doesn't seem like it was stressful or painful, was it? No, she says, no, I was out. I went under and I didn't come back up, she says. All right. Um, but so I was asking you about, I was, we were, I was noticing, like, okay, so I was noticing your hair in the video that I watched, and you know, it was about time to hear the bob and stuff, and I thought, gosh, yeah, your face looks really good, and I know that you were known for having tons of cosmetic work, I shouldn't, is that rude? That's probably rude, that you were open-minded about cosmetic procedures. She says, you do what you have to do, she says, you do this it takes work to do this. She says, it takes work. And she's like, you, have, you do what you have to do, you know? So it wasn't a vanity thing, right? Because that's the message that you gave to me when I saw that video right away, and we were kind of talking a little bit, um, that it wasn't a vanity thing. It was like a necessity thing. Like you did the cosmetic stuff and everything so that because you are the face of your product, right? So like you're the face of your clothing line and your jewelry line and other things. I understand that you have multiple businesses, correct? Yes. Her favorite is jewelry, she says, and like scarves, like pashminas and stuff. She loves the pashminas. Oh, she loves them, those scarves. Oh, she loves them. She's so, she loves that the best. That's her favorite. She says, you know, because it doesn't matter what size you are. You know, people struggle with their weight all the time. And as women, there's so much pressure on us. And, and then she refers like back to the end of the 60s. You had to be so pencil thin, she says. We had people like Twiggy and things. And so pencil, you had to be so pencil thin. And she says, it's completely unrealistic completely unrealistic, completely irrational. She said that so there's so much pressure and um, that's just the way it was though, that it was either that or you don't have a career. So when it comes to beauty and feeling good and looking good for all women of all sizes, of all shapes, of all, of all um, distinctive tastes, everyone has different tastes. She says some people, for example, might love floral prints. Others might like a paisley or more of a, a geometrical pattern, a geometric pattern. And so something for different people is, is important. It's important to, to offer that, to give the variety. I can tell that she does feel like her passion is that, like, like caring about the way you look, because that does seem like a vanity thing. However, I think in modern days now, when we're in the 2000s, that's what I get to say, we're in the 2000s, that in this century, it seems like, it's just normal. Like it's becoming normal with like reality TV and all that. And, and you, so Joan, you were on like fashion police and you know, on E! Entertainment with your daughter and things. And um, 
So you definitely had a say and a critical voice, a critical eye for that. Is that part of why you felt like you had to really take good care of yourself in an image wise, like um, weight or you know body consciousness and beauty and such? She says it was a necessity. It was a necessity. That's just how it is. That's that's the facts. It's not. It's not something that you uh, necessarily. She says it's not something you choose. It's chosen for you. You want this job. You want this industry. You got to do. You got to do what your job requires you to do. And um, so she's also showing me. So early on, she showed me Ed Sullivan. Now she's showing me Johnny Carson. And yes, there was. Um, discrimination or there was um, a different, she doesn't say discrimination, different treatment of women in Hollywood, in acting, in um, television, in, uh, you know, she says like, look, it was like Oprah and Barbara Walters were the breakthrough women on television. There wasn't, you didn't have, we didn't have a lot of choice. We had to take the roles we were, we were given that were available to us, but the men are the ones that controlled everything. And it's, it's funny now how that's changing, isn't it? It doesn't look like it may be on the outside, but it's changing. I feel like you're involved in politics. She says, oh, I have opinions. Don't, don't you think I would have opinions? Yes, I think you would have many opinions. Um, before we switch into other things, you're talking about women and the role of women and how you, um, the career that you grew in Hollywood was very different than what someone may experience nowadays. She said, yes, well, reality television. She said, with reality television, all bets are off. And you know, things are much more, she says, things are much more short-lived now. There's not, uh, it's not staying power, but what were you using? There's not this, um, there's not a guarantee that you'll have a career. And you have to constantly reinvent yourself, constantly push yourself, get better, get better, be better, and explore other avenues to make sure you can sustain your lifestyle, your choices that you make. So were you in New York? Yes. She shows me a beautiful apartment in New York, a beautiful, gorgeous apartment in New York. Did you prefer New York over LA? And she says, oh, I loved the, there's so much about old Hollywood. She says, you know, I loved the the feeling of being around there the atmosphere she says like in the award shows and stuff i love the atmosphere but you know after a while it gets just tiring it gets old after a while leave that to the young people she says younger people i like to visit but i'd much rather live in new york i did have a house in california as well and um, up in the she looks like it's up in the hills i'm not sure what that is near malibu maybe santa barbara or something up in the hills i see and um, near the coast, it looks like I can see the ocean. It's beautiful. Um, she wanted to be close to her daughter. Melissa, I think, is in New York City. I want to be close to my daughter. Um, Melissa looks like she's active in her mom's businesses. And she kind of laughs at me. She says something about perfume. Um, there was a failed attempt at perfume or something like that. She says she laughs about a perfume like aha like that's funny like that's a big joke That's not gonna um, That's not successful or it doesn't smell good or something like that She didn't like the perfume thing for her creating a perfume for her. There was talk about that, but she didn't like it um, And it seems like she always wears the same kind of shoes So I don't know if a shoe line would be all that successful either. That's why I'm seeing her same kind of shoes um, I see her back is bothering her. She has some back challenges, very sore back. And um, again, her face is like almost perfect, like almost like a statue. I mean, there were a lot of jokes about that, about that. Um, it feels like, so hey, if you have beauty secrets, can you give us a beauty advice or beauty secrets? What do you, what are the secrets to ageless beauty? She says, well, don't tell other, don't let other people tell you what beauty is. That's the most important thing. She said, that's the first thing. Don't let other people's uh, opinions of what is beautiful, what beauty is, matter to you. So, but that seems a little bit contradictory or hypocritical even. Did, that, did other people's opinions of beauty affect you or matter to you? Uh, it's different. She said, it's, there's a difference. She says, that's all, what there was then. That's all there was then. And... You're just used to, that's your routine, that's what you do. And it's different now. It wasn't back then. 
I didn't really have a lot of uh, leeway or a lot of flexibility there. It's like, do you want a career? Then you got to look good for as long as you possibly can. Okay. And she says, a cup of coffee and humidifier. And it really, and it looks like at night, like I can see a drink. And I want to say like pretty like martini glass or something, but it's clear liquid. So I don't know if it's a gin or if it's a vodka or what it is, but it, a drink and a drink. <laughs> she said, and a drink. It's like coffee in the morning, humidifier at night, before you go to bed, have a nice drink, have a drink. Something clear. Mm -hmm. All right. So what is your greatest lesson? That Looking back over your life, what's your greatest lesson? She kind of says you get what you pay for and you reap what you sow. And I don't know how to else to translate it besides that. You get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. Um, which is about investing in yourself or just, if you're gonna buy something, if you're gonna do something with your life, make the commitment, go all in. You get what you pay for. So it's not just about materialistic things, my friends. It's about us, what we invest, where we spend our time. Biggest bang for your buck kind of thing. She's like, you get what you pay for. So if you only give halfway, you're only gonna get halfway. I feel like her first husband died. I feel like she had a hus her husband died. I feel like I feel like she's married maybe twice. One of her husbands died. It feels like the first husband died. I don't know for sure. Somebody died first. One of two, one died. There's also an A name, like an Alfred or an Alan or an Alex. There's an A name, uh, masculine. And then you reap what you sow. So that's the same kind of way of saying you get what you pay for when you don't think about it in terms of materialistic things when you think about it energetically. Mm -hmm. Like it comes back around kind of a thing. But not because, it's not like a karma thing. She says, don't make it about karma. It's not that. I'm not, ta I'm not talking about that. That's not what I'm intending to share. Okay. So do you have a business advice for people? Especially women in business? Hire good people, she says. Get a good accountant and a good lawyer. <laughs> good accountant, good lawyer. <laughs> okay. I feel like I see images of you with Ronald Reagan. So I don't know if it's a Hollywood thing. I see images of you with him. I see something with PETA, animal cruelty stuff, the group against animal cruelty, animal testing, animal, all that stuff, PETA, P-E-T-A. I see your daughter really active um, as like an activist, as a voice. Can you talk a little bit about your transition when you left? I mean, you, you talked a little, we talked a little bit about it in the beginning, but, um, when you left your body, the timing, let's talk about the timing. Like, did you, did you have a choice? Did you know, were you aware of what was happening? Did you just wake up dead? <laughs> I can say that to you, I'm sure. Um, were you surprised? Um, if you could, would you have come back? I mean, what, how did that work? She says, you know, it's fascinating. I was kind of in a waiting room, so I left. It's kind of like I went to sleep, fully expecting to come back. And I entered this, like, it's like a big white waiting room, like at the hospital. And I still had my gown on and, and all that. And there was a man with me. And after a while, I realized it was Archangel Michael. And he was there to help, help protect me as I made my realization that I was dead. And I guess in some ways, it was like I had a choice. But I didn't feel like I did. I felt like it was time it was just this is what happens next this is where we go next you know when you're so used to people managing your schedule and bringing you places at this time and picking you up at this time and you have to be here for an interview and you have to be there for um, a show or event or fundraiser or whatever it is you're just kind of used to that so it didn't feel any different i thought okay well here's where i go next so there was a white light well sort of yeah she says well sort of 
It was like, a, but it felt like a, a waiting room, she said. It felt like a waiting room. So at what point did you realize that you were not um, brought back to life or you were not coming back into your body? She says, when Melissa was there. So you could see her, yes. But that was, that was some time later. That was long after. They tried to revive me and then I went by ambulance to the hospital and then Melissa was there and she, there was no, it, it kind of, um, it seems rather like a dream, but then you realize it's not a dream. It's a reality that you choose to be a part of. And by that time I recognize that's what, I recognize what was happening. It's, it's exactly like the movie Ghost. It's exactly like that. You know, and Patrick Swayze, he's dead too, so you could ask him. It's exactly like that movie Ghost. Okay. If there's something that you could share with people, um, your family or loved ones or other actresses or actors, or I mean, what would you leave? Uh, what kind of advice would you share? Or what kind of message would you share with those who are going to be watching this channel? Know your audience. Know your audience. And take, it, take full advantage of the opportunities that are granted to you. Because nothing is for sure. Nothing is for sure. You have to make things work. Even if it doesn't seem like it's the ideal situation, you've got to make it work. You've got to find, you've got to find the opportunity in everything. In everything that's given to you. She says granted, everything that's granted to you, every opportunity. You gotta find the opportunity. Do you gotta find it? It's like, uh, she's like, it's like trying to find the good stuff, you know? Take the good stuff out of it. Leave the rest, and then move on. Okay. I really feel a strong bond with her and her daughter, I'm gonna tell you guys that. She says that wasn't always the case. She says I was not around a lot. That was not always the case, but fortunately, um, and then she refers to a grandson. There might be more grandchildren, but she refers to a grandson. It almost looks like there's three grandkids, but she refers to a grandson. One and then maybe two, so it could be stepkids too. I can see something different. Um, or they came after she died, but she died in 2014. It was for 2014. So that's not very long to have two extra kids, but hmm, interesting. All right. Well, thank you very much, Joan Rivers. This has been an interesting conversation. And you guys have gotten to know me a little bit better, too. This is Bridget at Above Life Channel. I hope that this has been inspiring to you. It's certainly, it's certainly been interesting. And I hope that some of the messages and the information that comes through really hit home in a way that encourages you to live your life. Remember that the purpose is for all of us, for everyone here right now, is to live your life. You have got to live your life. It's only, it's, this is only your life. This is not my life. You do what you want with this content. But the purpose of this channel in part is to encourage you to live your life. Just, just live it. Thank you so much for watching.